what does your content say about you? Think about it. In this episode, I'm joined by the content queen herself, Rebecca Ives Rubin, for a fun and light conversation about content creation. Tune into this episode and learn three simple steps to create content that invites people in, how to use a wait what line to increase content views, the difference between a take post and a give post, why vulnerability does not detract from credibility, and the truth behind writer's block. It's not what you think. Rebecca Rubin is a magnetic marketing mentor for women entrepreneurs and the self-proclaimed content queen. She helps her clients write content that makes waves in the online world, overcome their inner blocks to visibility, and grow their businesses to six figures and beyond. Her work has been featured in Entrepreneur, Business Insider, The Huffington Post, and more. Today's episode is sponsored by my free giveaway and free training, How to Conquer Your Bullshit with CPR. This free training is going to help you bring your message to the masses. Sign up for the free training at rubyframon.com forward slash CPR. And then finally, if you're new to this podcast, welcome, and please take a moment to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review. If you're a loyal thought leader, thank you so much for being here, and I'm going to tell you to do the same. If you haven't yet dropped a rating and review, please do so now. Now it is time to chat about magnetic content creation with the content queen herself, Rebecca Rubin. Welcome to today's Thought Leader, where I'm challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. I'm your host, Ruby Fremont, and I'm here as a catalyst for you, the new generation of thought leaders. Join me every week as I dive into raw and real conversations that will help you amplify your presence, influence, and impact. Hey, Thought Leaders, I am back with a special guest that I have been trying to get on my podcast for quite a few months. And I don't know if she was ignoring me. or Definitely she- not. <laughs> but what matters is that she's finally here. And so, Thought Leaders, I am super excited to introduce you to the one and only Rebecca Ives Rubin. Rebecca, welcome to today's Thought Leader. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here. I'm so excited to have you here. Um, Funny enough, I think this is only our second time seeing each other on video because the first time was when Brandon was on my podcast. Oh, yes. You were sneaking around (laughs) in the background. I was like, hey, Rebecca. Um, And I always think it's really cool when we meet people on social media and we're like, wow, this person's like my jam, but you've never really met them in person. Totally. And it's just because of the I vibe. I you speak actually, but I don't know if we ever like met, met. It was like Joanna Turner's event years oh, ago. Yeah. I remember seeing you on the stage, but I don't think we ever like connected. But I remember thinking that you just had a really cool vibe and that you were very, uh, how would I say? You know how some people you just they speak and like everybody listens and they just have a very powerful aura around them. And I just remember thinking like this woman is a dynamo. Like she's really like very magnetic. So yeah. Oh, thank you. <laughs> I love that you use the word magnetic because magnetic is like one of my branding words. <laughs> Same. I love it. It's really, it's like the best way to describe, I don't know. You're just like a, a potent dose of human in the best way possible. And oh. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so yeah. much. Um, you know, it's like what they say, your vibe attracts your tribe. And totally. what I've seen you put out on social media, the way in which you show up mm-hmm. and the way in which you blend a directness mm-hmm. with like love and then more direct. <laughs> 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 I, I love it because I don't see enough people. I feel like there's not enough people doing this because a lot of people are just kind of like, pussyfoot in their way around the truth and mm-hmm. you're there and you're delivering the truth. Um, mm-hmm. and I love seeing people do that because it means to me, what it means when I see that is that you've really stepped into your power and you really own who you are and you own 
your gifts and you're very unapologetic with bringing that out into the world and showing people what's possible. Well, thank you. That's a huge compliment. And yeah, I'm the same way in life as I am on the internet. And that's super important to me to just have everything be really congruent. And, you know, if people, our content is like inviting people into working with us. And so if I were a different person on the newsfeed than I was on a coaching call, then that, I feel like that would be off. So yeah, I I take a powerful stand for people's greatness and I, I like to keep it, be, be the same me everywhere. I don't know. That's like, I didn't used to be that, but it Mm -hmm. really, there's so much freedom when you're just, you're the same you with your friends, with your family on the internet Mm -hmm. everywhere. Yeah. Congruency is powerful. Yeah. Um, And there was something that you said, your content invites people to work with you. And I think people don't think about it that way. It's like, I'm just going to have content for the the sake of creating content, or I'm going to, this is going to get a lot of likes, or this is going to get a lot of laughs. It's like, and your content is, is really that, that doorway to bring people into working with you or to buy your products or to, to enroll in your programs, whatever it is. To take the next step, right? To facilitate the transformation, all of that. Yeah. And like, I I think some people, I see people going like one of two, like they're on either extreme, right? There's like no direction. There's no focus. There's no like, like, yes, this is awesome. I'm I'm glad it sparked an aha moment, but let's like, let's actually take that to the next level and actually get a transformation, right? So it's either two on one and, or it's like, sales, 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 sales. And people are like, who are you? What do you stand for? Like, this is boring. You know what I mean? So I feel like it's like finding that balance kind of is so important. Yeah. And I think it's really easy to fall into one of those two um, types. You're either having no focus. And I think the no focus comes from being too wrapped up in what people think Mm -hmm. or um, like, I don't want to get judged. So I'm going to overthink everything. Or um, the no focus comes from like, I just want to get a lot of likes and I just want to get a lot of followers. Like it's one or the other, or maybe a a, a mixture of all of that, (laughs) a blend of all of that. And the sales piece, I feel like when people are like, I'm very unapologetic. You will mm-hmm. find invitations. I love it. The A's at it's the end so of good. Many yeah. of my posts. Um, but I, but there are those, and I've done this. I've done both of these things. I've done all of these things where it's oh, just same. sales, 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 sales. And you're like, yeah. literally, it feels like you're shoving your shit down someone's throat. Right. Um, and it's about finding the happy medium. But I don't know. I find for me personally in the past, I would go from one to the other, go from Mm -hmm. like the lack of focus to Mm -hmm. like, Oh my God, I need to make sales because I've just opened up this product or whatever. And then you start pushing. It doesn't feel good, Mm -hmm. nor does it really bring anyone in. And I often Mm -hmm. feel like when you do that, you're not really delivering value. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, one thing that I find to be helpful for that is to just anything can be a sales post as long as you like bridge it at the end. Right. Mm -hmm. So like I definitely... I was telling you this before we started recording, but I just got this like aerial yoga apparatus because I'm trying to bring more play into my life and spice it's up not my workout a routine. It's not so a sex thing. I mean, no, it could be. Honestly, didn't it totally could be. It wasn't even, <laughs> that was brought to my attention after posting about it online, but I posted about it. I was like, oh my God, I'm so excited. Guess what I just bought on Amazon? Whatever. And then I was like, by the way, like play is awesome. It's part of being your best self. Like, enrollment is now open for my mastermind. Like, I think you can tack that on to just about anything. And so it's like, you know, you're adding value, you're sharing connection. And sometimes it's a more focused teaching post, but yeah, I don't know. That's a good, the the bridge is key. Taking whatever you just shared that was either entertaining or informative or inspiring and then being like, okay, how does this connect to my ideal clients? How does this connect to my offers? Whatever. Right. So yeah. showing the real you on social totally. media in your posts, and then at the end, finding a way to bridge it into what you have to offer. Yeah, totally. And then I have a, this might be, I know your people like, like frameworks and tips and action. Yes. Items. Yes. <laughs> so one of my best things for how to create a great post is to number one, what's happened in my world recently? What's inspiring me? What's exciting 
what's shocking, like wh what's up. So that's number one. Number two, um, what's the lesson I've learned? What's my takeaway? Like what, what am I gleaning from this experience? And number three, how does this apply to my ideal clients and what they are going through? So I'll like write through those questions. I'll take the most interesting line. So there's always one line where it's mm -hmm. like kind of an attention grabber because you know, you want to be a pattern interrupt on the newsfeed. I'll For put sure. that line first. I'll make the paragraphs a little smaller, maybe break out some words, like, you know, play with it a little bit, massage it, tighten it, and then post that. And that's a great way to just like, you know, you've got something interesting in the beginning, but there's also like that deeper lesson in there or something where they're just like, oh, this caught my attention, but I'm also, I'm gaining something. I'm gaining an awareness. I feel more connected, whatever. Right. So, yeah. um, listeners, Rebecca just offered you a really awesome, simple framework. And I'm going to repeat this. So number one is Yay. like <laughs> sharing what's happening in your world or like what's up, something that you've experienced. Number two is like sharing the lesson or the insight or the takeaway from that experience. And number three, like how does this actually apply to my ideal customer client or audience? Um, mm -hmm. So tying it all in. And then I heard you say extracting like the most interesting or um, like the line like, where it's like, wait, what? It's like yeah. the wait, what line. And the wait, what first. line. I love <laughs> calling it the wait, what line. Um, <laughs> she said, what? what? Sometimes it's going to stop people in their tracks. And, you know, you don't have to go too crazy. But it's just something that's, like, going to catch people's attention. Yeah, and that's what you put yeah. at, at the top. Yeah, I and like to put that first. <laughs> it's crazy because we see a lot of people doing methods that, are similar to what you just described, right? They'll have like the um, clickbaity right, top right, line, right. like opening line. And then you start reading it and you're like, there's nothing of value. Right, <sighs> like, <laughs> right, right, right. Totally. And I, I see this so much, especially in my feeds. And I don't know, for me, when I see that and I start to see someone doing it repeatedly, I lose interest mm. and I don't want to follow them anymore because I, I just, I always say to my clients, like people want to know what's in it for me. Like totally. period. Like best they care about is generous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, the best content is generous content. Well, it's like when you're, when you're just, you're giving more than you're taking and you know, whether it's a give post or a take post, you know what I mean? A, a take post is like all about you, all about your program, like all about how fabulous you are. You know what I mean? It's just me centered. <laughs> and then a, a give post is like, I mean, I think vulnerability is a huge gift to people. When you share a part of you that's like yeah. you're alchemizing some shame or you're letting people know you're all in it together. I mean, that's the same in life. That's what I think a lot of people get confused with social media. They're like, social media is so hard. It's like, it's like humans talking to other humans. If you wouldn't do it in real life, like, do you know what I mean? I don't know. It's kind of yeah. blabbering on, but. No, I, I love that because, <laughs> um. I love the simplicity of asking yourself, is this a give post or a take post? Mm -hmm. Because I think we'd like to assume that we know the difference. Mm -hmm. And I believe that when we're in a either anxious state or overwhelmed state or like totally. a scarcity mindset, like I need to enroll for this thing, it's yeah. really easy to write take posts. Mm -hmm. and not actually realize what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So um, mm -hmm. for our listeners, like to even ask yourself before you hit enter, like, is this a give post or is this a take post? Yeah. 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 I feel like Gary Vee talks about this sort of thing a lot where he with does this whole like jab, 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 jab yeah. uh, whatever it is. Like that's it. It's, but it's like with anything, when you are giving more than you're taking, like, people want to help you. They want to support you. They want to like, you know, it's like human nature. So. Yeah. And I know, I know that we're going to have some <laughs> listeners that are listening and they're probably like, but I give so much already, <laughs> you know, you know what I mean? Cue well, the small islands. But yeah. well, so that's interesting. Right. I have thoughts on that. I don't know yes, if you want me to please, refine I want to hear all your thoughts on this. <laughs> <laughs> so like that to me, if you're like, oh, I give so much already, it just tells me that you're not really having fun in your content and that you're not like totally in your like natural marketing rhythm. Because I, 
if, if it's feeling really depleting to give the amount that you're giving and it's, it's not working, like I, it's like, there's a kink somewhere in that. And it's mm -hmm. like, let's take a look at that. Right. Cause mm -hmm. I don't think it should be so hard to create a lot of content. And if it is, there's probably a lot of limiting beliefs in the way, or maybe you just need more tools and strategies and you're out of the habit, right? You've right. got some writer's block, whatever. But like, if it feels, if creating content is feeling exhausting and depleting and it's not yielding the results, like there's something to look at there. Mm. It's kind of my thought. Yeah. Can we dive deeper into that? Because I think yeah. that's really interesting. Totally. Um, so if you're creating a lot of content and it's not yielding results and you're feeling really depleted. Yeah. Um, I heard you say like, there's probably some limiting beliefs in there. Totally. Um, I would love to dive deeper in to what could actually be contributing to oh that God, yeah. feeling. Yeah, yeah. Because I think that this is something that um, people kind of go through cycles. Mm -hmm. um, when things are good, I, I wrote this long post about this a few weeks ago. It's like, when things are good, things feel good. Right? right. And then shit hits the fan mm -hmm. and you start to feel worse mm -hmm. um, and you just perpetuate the pain and then you sink deeper yeah. and deeper and it's like quicksand and then totally. all of a sudden your content shit and then you're feeling like, uh, like I keep giving and you start getting into victim mentality. Yeah. And yeah it's yeah, really yeah. easy to like get stuck in those stories and our yeah. content, like it really doesn't have to feel so difficult uh totally it, it, like and you don't have to be happy and peppy to create great content I think that's right. a limiting belief you know what I'm saying like yeah. I think some of my best content has been when I'm like fuck this whole human life thing is kind of painful right now like this is not yeah. um whatever and so I think it's what comes up for me with that is just if you're going through it you're circle of soulmate clients are going through a similar energetic. I really believe that we have like incarnated and there are certain people that were just like blueprinted to help. And whether, you know, I just read, um, Caroline, Carolyn Meese's sacred contracts, whatever. That we have like <gasps> One of the best books people. ever, by the way. So good. And that we've like, we have a contract, like we're going to come down and at some point on this earth, in this whole journey, we're going to make an exchange of some yes. kind, right? Yeah. And so I really believe that there's like certain cohorts or certain circles of people that like are on a similar journey to you, but you might be a couple steps ahead, not just in the like making money, like we've been in business this long knowledge thing, but like in terms of like your evolution and your growth, there are certain energetic patterns or archetypes as she would say right. that we've, we're just a little further along and a little more embodied in. Mm -hmm. And I, so when I'm going through something, it's like, Oh, I'm meant to carve out this path through this for people who are similar to me. And I think that's what leadership is, right? It's like, this is this like challenge and, there's no blueprint that I see where somebody is doing it like me. So I'm going to, in real time, like talk about what this is like for me and talk about how I'm carving this path and the people who resonate are going to resonate. And then when you, when you're really honest and authentic like that, like you end up with awesome clients because they're like, you know, you're going deep in your content and they're really vibing. And so when you get on the phone, it's like long lost soul sisters, you know? know. Yeah. Cause you're, you're writing what they're probably experiencing or feeling or have experienced or have oh, felt. Um, and really. they get to see you as a human being. I think that there's 100%. something to be said with letting the guard down, kicking the pedestal to the fucking curb mm -hmm. and allowing people to just like see you as, as themselves. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, going a little spiritual here, like w we are all the same, right? Oh, like I, I see myself in you, you see mm -hmm. me, you see you and me. Mm -hmm. And the more that we allow our clients to experience that from us, I feel the easier it is to then create that automatic connection Completely. and then invite them into the next step. Um, and yet it's so easy to get caught up in the, this is how I want to be perceived mm. online. Like this is, yeah. I, I need to be seen as an expert in this topic, or I need to be seen as a leader. And so this is how I'm going to show up, or this is what I need to do. And then all of a sudden people start to write copy and show up online in ways that 
um, going back to congruency, aren't congruent with who they actually are. Mm -hmm. The thing is like who you authentically are, what you're actually interested in, what's really happening is so much more interesting than what you're like orchestrating in your head. Like you're like playing director of this movie, but like God's got it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> what's actually happening is way more interesting. And I don't know, something you said was uh, like your vulnerability does not detract from your credibility and you get to just like be it. You know what I mean? Like it's an, again, I think it's like give versus take. Like it's take if you're treating your newsfeed like a therapist and you're energetically dumping on them. It's mm. give if you're like letting them see your process, right? So I'm not a fan of people just like going onto the internet and just being like, everything sucks. I'm so uh, like, yeah, no verbal vomit. <laughs> no, I don't think that's like helpful. But I think if you're like, hey, like I had this, like I just did this the other day with a photo. So I am a plus size model now for a local boutique that I love. And it's so fun, but it's, I've been on such a journey with my body. Um, and I got one of the photos back that I saw posted and I had this immediate wave of shame where I was like, oh fuck, like I, is that what I look like? That's such a weird angle. Like this photographer's clearly only shot size two models before. Like it was all, it was like this deep mm -hmm. wave of heat of shame. And I shared it and it did super well, but I was like, I talked through like my whole process when I first saw the photo, what it brought up in me. And maybe this is a silly example, but it really, it was a, it was a, alchemizing of shame in my right. system around my body and I did it in real time on the internet and there was just a swell of love from people and you know and now when I look at that picture I see someone totally I see a totally different thing than when I first saw it and I shared that like mm -hmm. sort of alchemy with yeah people. and I yeah. think that's like a give post even though in the moment it felt like I feel ashamed and ugly like that was right the little girl in me how she felt and so yeah. yeah. I don't know. That's an example. Probably because other women were able to watch, witness you in that and see right. themselves. Right. You mm -hmm. in that. And yeah. I mean, for me, all of my, all of the people that I've ever hired as my coaches and mentors um, have been people that I could see me in. Totally. Not people 100%. that were so far like up on their pedestals that I couldn't I couldn't find like a similarity. It was like people I really saw myself in or similar values. Um, I love that. And, and it's like, if we're not showing that in our content, then what are we showing? Right. It's yeah. crazy. Yeah. People just want to connect with humans. And the best coaching relationships are, in my opinion, when somebody definitely like you know, they're embodying something you want to step into. They have, they have understandings and knowings and experience that's really mm -hmm. valuable that's going to help speed up your process. But they're also humans, right? And it's just right. what you're saying. Like, there's not this, like, weird pedestal thing going on. It's just like, hey, I'm a being that can help you. <laughs> like, cool, let's do this exchange. You know? Right. Yeah, and in order for people to actually see that, they, that you can help them, you mm -hmm. have to have already been helping them in some way yeah you're their content. internet coach first like <laughs> I like to think of the people like on my on my newsfeed that I'm connected to like they're my clients they just don't know it yet and they'll right. get the memo eventually <laughs> you know yeah. and I'm not attached to the when but I've set the intention that if someone really sparks my content eventually we're going to make an exchange of where I'm you know in a more formal capacity and where money is exchanged because that's just like I think money is such a beautiful, I don't know. I think when you exchange money for something, what, it, what is the saying? There's transformation in the transaction. Yes. Whatever. Yeah. I think that's really true. Yeah, so. me too. Because it, yeah. it locks down the commitment. Yes, locks down. That's exactly what it feels yeah. like. Yeah, it, it's like, okay, I'm solidifying this commitment. Like this is not just like a thing that I'm saying to myself. I'm solidifying it. Right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And the, and the content is the gateway to that. Yeah, you know, totally. Content that we're created. I can't tell you how many times, I mean, all my clients come to me through my social media or okay. referrals. That's it. Mm -hmm. Like, okay. that's it. <laughs> right. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> people don't realize that. And it's like, no, not all of my posts are straight up like sales blasts, but it's because I continue to create content 
with my audience and my ideal client in mind. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And I'm not afraid of showing who I am. I love that. Because we have to create connection. I mean, like you, you've said a few times on this episode already is like, we're human. (laughs) <laughs> we're human. Like everyone is a human being going through their yeah. own human experiences. And so totally. if we're not bringing our, if we're not bringing our humanness to the table, mm-hmm. then like, what the fuck are we bringing to the table? Like, I don't want to yeah. ever be seen as, um, well, let me retract my statement. There were many times <laughs> in my career when I had tried to manipulate how I was being seen. Oh, same. Right? <laughs> Look, I still catch myself doing it, right? Like, right. I'm not perfect at this, but it's like, we look at what works and what works right. is being a human who's also solidly in their worth and their yes. expertise, right? You don't have to choose one or the other. No. I think you do such a good job of that. Thank you. Thank you. And I think that this is um, one of the things that many, many people strive to do. And mm-hmm. I will outright say it's been a journey of trial and error for me. Um, but the journey has been mostly rooted in getting to a place where I can stand with, in full conviction of like who I am and my gifts and what I have to offer. Because I think without that, like everything is difficult. Like even creating content is difficult. Like how are you supposed to create content if you don't know who the fuck you are or you don't know what you value or you haven't even you know, done the work to face some of your limitations that are probably getting in the way of you Mm -hmm. even writing that post or hitting enter Mm -hmm. (laughs) on that post and sharing that piece of content. It's crazy. Um, I love it. Now I'm so curious about you. Like, I'm like, how did you get there? (laughs) What was your journey to get there? Can I interview you? (laughs) I mean, we can pull the tables for a second. For me, I mean, for me, it's just been, um, I would say that I am more committed to my inner growth than I am to the business. Same. Uh, And (laughs) yeah, I I, I was actually, I was going to ask you this as well. So Mm -hmm. I'll start off by sharing that. Um, And that's why the work that I do with my clients is always that like, it's an Mm -hmm. inner game. Yes. Like I will help you create a podcast and do speak on stages around the world and do all the shit and create a movement with your message. And it's not done through strategy. <laughs> oh, a hundred percent. Um, so for you, because I mean, I feel like we really only connected maybe the last couple of years on social yeah. media. I'm not really too sure, yeah. but, um, I know from what I've seen is you're a person who is very, very committed to your inner growth. Yes. Um, I mean, how else or what else is there? <laughs> yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other things, Rebecca, and a I lot know. of people well, choose a I lot just, of other things, but like your well, it business. It just feels like the most direct route, right? If people right. are wanting to speak on stages and wanting to do all this stuff, it's like awesome. So, so awesome, right? But it's not, it's like they want to do that so they feel happy, so they feel fulfilled, so they feel respected, so they feel connected. And it's like, why not just go straight to that feeling and then live from that place and then just see what cool stuff comes into your reality, you know? That's how <laughs> yeah. I it. yeah. And so for you, it's been, I'm, I'm guessing, like a, a journey of, of deep inner growth to create oh like God. the business and, oh, um, yeah. you know, the expertise and, and, Um, Well, so the expertise is interesting. So I worked in marketing. I worked for a digital marketing agency for seven years before I started coaching. So I felt like I had a lot of information and knowledge and I was like SEOing websites and writing copy and tweeting for various companies around the DC area. Like I just kind of like picked it up and learned it. And so I was pretty much in that area, but it was so interesting because the clients of this agency, we would have the same team, the same ad spend, the same everything. And one campaign would do so well. And the other like would kind of flop. And I'd be like, I know, but I wasn't really like, I couldn't say it. I was just like the marketing girl or whatever. But like, it it was the energy of the team and the company and the alignment and the the CEO and a point person on the project, like that stuff made such a big difference. And so I love what I can do now because like the marketing is so fun. Right. And I like to geek out on strategy, but if you, if you're the central hub, you're the common denominator of your business of all of it. And so your stuff is whack. (laughs) That's just going to ripple out around you, you know? (laughs) So if your shit is whack, (laughs) your 
your content's going to be whack. <laughs> well, it might be interesting, but it might right. not yield you the results that you want. Right. Yeah. And so, I mean, look, if you're, oh, I don't even know. I could go on and on, but you got to, I think the more self-aware you are and the more aligned your life is, and I know that word can be really overused, but basically like your core values, like you're living them out. Mm -hmm. Right. And your congruency, your congruency, honesty, self-awareness, and like, you know, I think sometimes we, like, I know this, especially in the beginning of my business, like I was con I, like making investments for the wrong reasons or trying right. sh chasing shiny objects and not being, not having that like holistic awareness and mm -hmm. moving deliberately in the direction of what's actually in alignment with your values. That's nourishing. Yeah. I don't know if that makes sense, but yeah. 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 Going after the things for the wrong reasons. I mean, yeah. I don't even know. Like I hesitate to say wrong, wrong reasons. Is, I think yeah. I just have bachelorette in my head. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more like so we're, not here for the right reason. we're chasing the, the external results. Yes. Right. And, and it's great to have goals. It's great to have lofty goals. Like I have financial yeah, goals so every fun. month. Cool. cool. But Absolutely. if you're just going after something to get that right. and bypassing the work that you need to do to stand in congruency with that goal, then it's just going about it wrong. Ride. Yes, <laughs> like you might get there. It's just not going to be as graceful yeah. as it could be. Or it could be a painful ride that doesn't even get you there. Yeah, <laughs> I think there's a certain like we can muscle our way to things. Yeah, but it's just it's exhausting after. It a while, is exhausting. You know? Yeah, it is exhausting. And then people wonder like. Oh, I feel so, um, what is the word? Oh my God. I'm having a brain fart. Writer's block. Like I'm having writer's block. I can't write any content right now. Well, it's like, maybe you should release the pressure that you're putting on yourself to write yeah. a perfect post right now. And just like dive into what you're feeling and experiencing totally. and, like, a little bit of inner work. And I can assure you something's going to come out of you. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, I have a lot to say on writer's block actually. Oh, can riff on yeah. that a little yeah. bit. Can we, can we riff on that? Let's riff on writer's Let's riff block. On writer. <laughs> so writer's block is super interesting. On the practical side, I'm a big fan of repurposing content. I think people yes. repurpose way too little. And I think most of your people are seeing like a fifth or like a ninth of your content. So I have this like Google doc. That's like my crowd pleaser content file yes. basically where if something does well or it's really like sparking something I just copy and paste it and put it in there and then for the days that I have writer's block like I just repurpose and I don't judge myself at all so that's number one mm -hmm. number two writer's block to me feels like it's rooted in avoidance there's something mm -hmm. you're avoiding there's something you don't want to look at or maybe you're just exhausted and you need to sleep but like having a clear channel is your natural state. So it's like, what are you not wanting to look at? Like times when I've had writer's block, it's been like, I'm in a relationship that I know isn't right for me. And I'm afraid to journal and face myself. Or right. I know that a business thing isn't working. And I, I'm really like scared to feel the feelings associated and, and take the next step. So I think Right. Often writer's block, it's, it's a disconnection from your channel because there's something you're afraid of facing. Oh, I love that. Because I, if I think back to times when I've experienced writer's block, mm -hmm. it is because of that, the avoidance. It's like, oh, it's I've fallen error. off my habit of, you know, meditating daily or doing my daily practices or doing my daily rituals. Mm -hmm. And I my unconscious kind of feels like an imposter. And so it's really hard to write something. And yet I'm avoiding why I've been avoiding my mm -hmm. rituals, like things like that. Yeah, totally. Um, oh, that's totally. so, so interesting. So to our listeners, if you are experiencing writer's block right now, what are you avoiding? Yeah. And also there's, a, I will say there's like a few different flavors of writer's block, yeah. I think, because if you're usually a writer and you identify as someone who writes, I think writer's block is what are you avoiding? I think some people are just not in the habit of writing. Right. Right. And so it's kind of like you're going to resist going to the gym until you like get in the habit of going to the gym and then you start to crave it and whatever. So I think if you're just totally not in the habit of writing, you might not be avoiding it because of something deep down. I mean, you might, but it might just be like, you need to create the habit. So in my, in my course content queen, 
the biggest assignment is right for five minutes every day for mm. several months, mm -hmm. every day, no matter what, it can be total shit. It can be a to-do list. It can be your dream last night. I don't care, but literally pen to paper, fingers to keyboard every single day. When you start to do that and you don't judge what you write in a couple of weeks, you're going to get into some momentum will take over mm -hmm. and you'll build that habit. So yeah. I, I think there are those two flavors, like someone who's just not in the habit of writing at all. It might right. not be that avoidance. It might just be a habit, but right. somebody who is identifies as a writer, as a creator, as a content, you know, person on the internet, whatever, like then I would say it's something internal. Right. I love That's that. Yeah. Yeah. So writing content is, it takes some, it utilizes a muscle. And totally. so the more we want to flex it, the more yeah. we've got to like use it. So yeah. writing every day, that's another great tip. Um, Rebecca, we're nearing the end of this episode. Okay. <laughs> um, time flies. Like I'm just like, whoa, okay. Time uh, totally flies. I'm I so not a time oriented person. <laughs> Good thing I am. Um, so do you have any final thoughts that you'd like to leave with our listeners? Yeah. My final thought is that if you have a desire to create this online presence and to really be a leader in the world, like it's not an accident and people really want to hear from you, but they want to hear from the real you. And so every time you feel like your heart pound before you're about to post or you're like, Ooh, like, you know what that is. And you're like, it, it literally feels like there's some alchemy taking place and you, you feel that sensation. Like that's such a gift to the world. And and people are literally praying to God that they find a solution to a problem or a challenge, or they just like, even just articulating someone's experience is such a gift and it can come so easily from you. And there are people who are just, yeah, they're praying and craving to find you. If only you are brave enough to get out there and express yourself. Mm -hmm. And so just be brave and keep showing up because people are really, really want to hear what you have to say. Mm, beautiful. And so true. So true. Thank you so much, Rebecca, for being here You're with awesome. me today. Um, why don't you tell how, tell our listeners how they can stalk you online and yeah. I'll also have everything in the show notes. Oh, amazing. Okay. I love Instagram. I'm at the content queen, the underscore content underscore queen. Um, I love my personal Facebook profile. <laughs> That's where I play a lot. And my website is the pursuit of fabulous.com, but it's, it's being redone right now. So oh. it's there, but it's yeah. Anyway, so you can come to any of those places, but yeah. Awesome. Um, Rebecca, thank you so much for just bringing your wisdom and your energy. What a fun conversation about content, which um, I love because like, I think a lot of people put so much pressure on content creation mm -hmm. that it doesn't feel fun. And so I'm happy that our conversation felt fun and light because this is how your content totally. writing needs to feel. It's like, just have fun. Yeah, <laughs> totally. It gets to feel good. Cool. Well, to our listeners, thank you so much for joining me and Rebecca on this episode of Today's Thought Leader, where we are challenging you to rise up, speak up, and create a movement. Woo! Yes. Sorry. <laughs> Inspired. If you have any questions uh, about today's episode for either myself or for Rebecca, please reach out to us on social media. The handles are going to be in the show notes. Or if you just want to say what's up to us, say what's up. Um, and then, of course, I'm going to ask you to download a few episodes and drop a rating and review on iTunes because this shit helps. Thank you so much, Rebecca. Thank you to our Thanks. listeners. And I'll see you all here on Thursday for a fresh new episode of Today's Thought Leader.